warm I've been in all of 2022 just now. She's looking forward to racing. A little bit of an unusual track. Sigai with a bit of indoor prowess. The world indoor champion, don't forget it, 1500 metres. Might just find these bends to a liking. So we'll just get a bit of geography on the first lap. We'll go down the, effectively the back straight. It's great that the crowds this year are inside as well as uh, outside. They had to queue up outside the fence last year, but they've been allowed in this time. A much bigger crowd. And they head down the back straight. And when they get to the top corner, it's a pretty sharp 90 degree turn around the Opera House. Which they'll make in just a second. They will temporarily go out of view for just a second or two as they go around that corner. It's pretty tight. And then the bank track takes them on the back of the Opera House, round about 100 metres or so, perhaps a little bit less. And they make another left-hand turn, sharp again, about 90 degrees. And then effectively they're into what would be, I guess, normally called the home straight, which has a little bit of a kink in it. And then they come round in front of us, and that will be one lap. So we'll keep an eye on the uh, pace. It's obviously not the normal 400 metre laps, but the kilometre marks will give us an idea of how quick they're going. Well, 80 metres exactly, I've been reliably told, Steve, from the arch. They've just come through to the finish line, what effectively will be the finish line in front of us in our commentary position. So that'll be the, the sprint finish. We normally get them to wind it up with 200 metres to go. We're back with the women's 5,000 metres. I'd love to tell you how fast they're going, but a bit like last year, I think, uh, between the organising and the uh, athletes, it's quite difficult. So they're running round about one hour, one hour, excuse me, one minute 40 for a lap. So we think they've got through in about 250, 2,000 metres, which is quick, much quicker than we'd anticipated. And they are well strung out. Sigai's now left in the front with Chebet Hassan. They're trying to hang on to the pace with Alicia Monson, but there's a gap there now. You can see it. And Chebet is just looking comfortable, looking good. The world 5,000 metre champion with the lead now, but she's there to be shot at. Sifan Hassan just realising that gap is a dangerous one. Monson's not going to close it. So Sifan Hassan, if she is to get on, the, on terms with the other two, really needs to think about making a move fairly quickly here. There's still a fair way to go in this race, of course, but you do not want to let those two athletes get a significant lead, even at this pace. Well, Sega is due to double up in the 1500 metres uh, tomorrow, so a busy old couple of days for her. Just getting an official time of the split for the first kilometre, 250. They were tasked with going out at 236, the pacemaker. Again, as Steve said, we should put a little asterisk against some of these split times because of where we are. It is a temporary uh, facility that we're working on, but coming through at 547 through two kilometres, that is appreciably slower than the pacemaker had been asked for. Well, it was around what they were asking for in terms of total time, but it, it's just meant that the first kilometre was quick and the second kilometre was seven seconds slower. But they've ended up kind of back in 14.30 pace, and then you can tell that the two in the front have slowed so much that Monson has dragged... One and two from the World Championships, and number two goes past the silver medalist in the 5,000 metres in Eugene, now moves to the front, just senses it slowed a little bit. Hassan is always looked as though she's been hanging on Monson now just beginning to drop off that group there so Chebet now takes over the lead from Sigai Sigai had been at the front but kilometers of 257 and then a 254 just meant that Chebet felt as though I need to move along she's been out kicked by Sigai she knows that if it comes to a kick on the last three four hundred meters it's likely that Ethiopian might just have the legs of her tires moved up as well Kemboy still there, Hassan lurking at the back of this group as they come down now in front of us. They've got three circuits to go. That's around about a mile left of running, just under. Chebet leads, Sigai second, then Tyre, then Kemboy, then Hassan. Pace just beginning to pick up again. Two, as I said, 2.54 for the third kilometre. Well, Monson off the back of that group, just struggling to stay with them. And uh, as Steve mentioned, it was so, so strong in Lausanne over 3,000 metres, what, about uh, 10 days or so ago. And she's working really hard, and she has worked hard. And down the back straight, she is uh, starting to get on the coattails of Hassan. She's done really well, has Monson, to get back into that group. Yeah, no, to take nothing away from her, I think they 
who've stopped running at the front temporarily in, in the a real sense of the pace the guys decided no when she met with the front just thought she would push on didn't fancy it the guy also just waiting now that last lap in eugene was under 60 seconds to win the gold medal beaten by faith kipiegon in the 1500 meters and bounced back in the longer distance She's a still a natural 1500 meter runner, but she's got such good endurance. And she can, when you get to this point in the race, this is not what you want to happen. Hassan at her very best would have been okay with this as well, because she could kick. But where they are at the moment, don't just mean in their positions in this race, because Hassan is in a bad place there. She senses that perhaps moves out. But Sigai, would, you would expect you to have the legs over all of these if it just, just come down to sprint they're slowing so much that Monson decides she wants to try and get things moving at the front well Sagai almost jogging and having a good old look around and Monson as you say has been allowed to to rejoin this group you mentioned also that maybe the indoor prowess of someone like Sagai would play into these slightly uh, banked and very tight bends very much her her field with two laps to go With the exception of Monson, all of the other women have won medals at World Championships or Olympic Games at distance events, either indoors or outdoors. That gives you the idea of the calibre she's taking on, but Dave Rittenheim's Ritten got her running brilliantly well. 3-3, by far the slowest kilometre. Not surprising by the standards of what we're seeing earlier on. They've just slowed and she's just picked it up again, just trying to get things moving a little bit. Remember the lead, if you did watch the Diamond League from Lausanne, the lead, sorry, um, the uh, over 3,000 metres that was, wasn't it? Not over 5,000 metres. The lead that she had, she almost held up to it, but they came charging at the end. And uh, Monson knows the kickers are sitting, the kickers are waiting. Chebet can move. She won the Commonwealth title quicker than Ailish McColgan over the last 600 metres in the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. But look at Sigai on the inside now. Hassan is still there. Hassan is still there, yeah, she was also talking very bullishly, she's been working her way back of course from that really extended and thoroughly deserved break after Tokyo Olympics, it took uh, virtually seven months off, only started racing in, in May this year, but race by race, just showing signs that she's getting stronger and stronger. And Hassan indicating that uh, she's heading for half marathon next, uh, next month in October. Sigai herself said that maybe she'll think about it, but I uh, think that's further distance for her. But they take the bell. One lap to go, but it's not 400 metres. They've still got 517, obviously less than that now, but approaching 400 to go. Hassan trying to get around these corners. Looks as though she's finding it tough. And Monson trying to move from the front. And look at Sigai, a little push there for Kip Kemboy on the curb. Tie on the outside. Then Chibet tries to cover the move of the world champion down the back straight then they've got two more tight corners to go Sigai with that grimace on her face Tae world medalist over 3,000 metres indoors looks good looks comfortable Chibet looks as though she might have a little bit extra the junior world cross country champion who's now made such a great move onto the track but Hassan has spent she can't find any speed in those legs and now the big kick starts. Sigai has the advantage of being at the front. Tire right on her shoulder. Chebet trying to see if she can come off this last curve and find something a little bit extra. Four of them are away. Kip Kemboy's doing her best to try and hang on. About 100 metres of running left. Sigai kicking hard. This is all about judgment. They need to be able to make sure they can see the finish line. They're walking out with the tape now. And then right on the inside, Chebet has stolen the march. Kip Kemboy moving into second. And it's Beatrice Chebet who's going to get some revenge for the World Championships by winning the Diamond League title over 5,000 metres. Well, she wasn't able to outkick Sigai in Eugene. But tonight, she was patient. She waited. Sigai kicked her hard and went early. And those two turns, you just lose that little bit of momentum. And they were all over the place, really, coming off the last corner. I don't think Hassan, Sifan Hassan particularly enjoyed that experience. But what a good finish from Chibet. And they still pulled it back, despite that 3 or 3 fourth kilometre. A very fast last 600 metres or so. Chibet is the champion.
Well, when she made the move, it was decisive, wasn't it? Diminutive, a really slight figure, and to outkick Gudaf Segai. And this is a new surface for pretty much all of them. Some of them were, were here last year, but it's not like racing on a 400 meter track, and it's not the same shape either. It is the same surface, the Koniga surface, that we'll be racing on tomorrow night in the Letzigrund, but it is all a bit odd, and it takes a little bit of getting used to. But uh, Chebet, and there was a group of six, wasn't it? Into the final lap, the 560 odd meters. But Ch Chebet, when she made that move, it was decisive. 14.31.03, the winning time. Kim Kenboy was who came home in second place. And good after Segai, who, as we mentioned, will be going into 1500 meters tomorrow, having to settle for third, Hassan back in fifth. Monson did her best, didn't she? She's uh, really found good form at the uh, end of the year. Just doesn't have quite have that ability to lift the pace that these guys have. But Sigai, I'm just not sure whether she, she looked tired, didn't she? She has that bit of a grimace, but she didn't have that acceleration that we often see from her. She has a little look there, doesn't she? Her first attempt down the back straight, but it didn't break them, and Chibet came off that last bend the best. I think perhaps just a bit of misjudgment from Sagai, but Chibet, Kip Kemboy, really good. Quick times, 14.31. So by my reckoning, around about 2.45 last kilometer, no thereabouts. Well, the men's race will be the other track race of the evening. That'll be a little bit later on. So between now and then, we'll be concentrating on all of the field action right in the middle of that arena there. It's a great stadium atmosphere with the spectators in and around the athletes. So, Daniel Thomas Dodd, the uh, former Commonwealth Games champion, not had the best of seasons by her own very, very high standards, still the uh, Jamaican champion.